What's going on guys? It's Franchise923 and in the next couple of videos I'm going to talk about how we can use GeoJSON data with Folium. So in the last couple of videos we were making like markers based on um, a response from a REST API. Well in this video we're going to use GeoJSON to display data. Um, so GeoJSON is a, a really popular way of uh, working with geospatial data especially like for web mapping on the internet. Um, and someone commented and was interested how we could use GeoJSON data and it, yeah, it's, it's definitely worth talking about. Um, so this is what we're working towards. So you can see here we have um, basically the outline of the US. So uh, a GeoJSON file that has um, all the states here. And you can see as I hover over, we're getting like metadata about, um, about it. So we're just displaying the state name here. Um, but there's other metadata we could put here too. Um, yeah, so let's go head over to our Python file. So this is how I left it in the last video. I'm actually just gonna get rid of most of this crap because we don't need it. And we don't need this. And something else that I did, uh, that map I was just showing you here, we're using a, a different base map. Um, so let's, figure out how we can use a different base map in um, Folium. So if you type Folium, just Folium, and we'll look at the documentation here and go to the quick start. So you can see here, this is just displaying like a, a built in map. We want to use this, um, this one. So it says last leaf Folium supports passing any leaflet.js compatible custom tile set. So so copy this and like instead of using the other way of uh, making a map we're going to use this method so it looks very similar but we just have this uh, we're, we're basically just passing something different in the tiles here so I need to make this uh, a variable and I'm going to keep this all the same so I want to this is just like where the map is initially going to start like the extent so I'm just going to keep this exactly the same and now we can get rid of this. And we have to figure out where, like what base map to use. So if you Google this, there's this handy website. If you Google leaflet base maps, this is basically a website showing you all the different like providers you can use. Um, and then most importantly, this, the actual syntax to, um, to like how to access that data. So what I was showing you earlier, that black thing, the black base map, that was um, an ArcGIS base map. So if you just search, or maybe it's search for Esri here. If we search for Esri world imagery, this is basically the syntax that we need. So let's just try copying this. And I know this isn't the black one. This is gonna be world imagery, but if we copy this, I'm most in, uh, interested in like this um, exact syntax here. So if we try this, and make sure it's in quotes. Uh, let's just try this and we should just have a blank base map that's like the world uh, that we saw a second ago. So if I go to this file and open up the index.html, now you see our base map's different. So that's cool. Um, but I said I like that black one, so I need to go to this website here. So as you can see, like as I'm panning around, it's making different requests. So this is a tile server and it, or it's a map. Yeah. Tile server. And as I zoom and pan it, it's requesting these little tiles. So we need to open this in a new tab and I just want to see what else they have on this server. So if I just cut it and go to rest services, the, the one I'm interested in is in the canvas and it's this dark gray base. So we just need to substitute this uh, with what's here. So did it end in tile? No, it ended in map server. So I'm just gonna paste this in just like that. And that looks right. So let me rerun this. And refresh our index.html. Okay, cool. So now we have our black base map, which it just looks cooler and cleaner, I think. Um, 
Yeah, so next, now, like I said, what we're gonna do in this video was how we can use GeoJSON data. Um, so first we have to get some GeoJSON data. So just Google GeoJSON of United States. And I got this sample data from this website and I just clicked the US states and just click GeoJSON. All right, and let's, I'm actually going to cut this and just paste it in my folder here. So I actually have it from when I was working with this earlier, but if you don't have it, just paste it. Um, it says it already exists, so I'm just gonna overwrite it. And now you can see here's our GeoJSON data. And I actually don't like looking at it in PyCharm. For some reason, it just looks kind of all over the place. So I'm gonna open it up in Notepad++, or I like Visual Studio Code. Actually, let's open it there. So we should be able to say format document here. Okay, so here, this is much easier to look at. So you can see we have um, this these objects, and like here, for example, this is main. So the, the field is named name. So that's gonna be important when we, we say like we want um, this to pop up like when we hover over it. And you can see like it's just uh, basically an outline of the state of Maine. So that's why there's all these coordinates associated with it. So imagine like this is a, a point, that's a point, that's a point. Um, yeah, so just get the location of that GeoJSON file. So I'm gonna shift right click and say copy as path. And then I'm just gonna put this in a variable for now. All right, just like that, just so we have access to it. Now we need to go back to Folium's documentation and see exactly how we can use GeoJSON. So if you go to GeoJSON, uh, where did it go? Here we go. So they're showing multiple different things they're doing here. So they're adding three different layers here. So they're adding one from the internet, one and two from local. So, uh, so see, this is a path to a JSON file. So we just need this bit right here. All right, um, go back to PyCharm, paste this in and this Instead of that, we're going to call it, we're going to use our GeoJSON variables. So this is just basically the source, like where the GeoJSON is. So GeoJSON, and that should do it. So I click run. Now let's reopen index.html. And you can see, there we go. We have uh, an outline of the US. Sweet. But you'll notice what's happening. When I hover over, I'm not seeing any any data being displayed. So this is um, because we have to do one more thing, and it's I wish they in the documentation they put it in this section, but it's a little more hidden. In order to get like tooltips to show up when you hover over, we need to like kind of dig into their documentation. So I think it's in maybe vector layers. Let's just search for GeoJSON. Um, so it's not this. Uh, here it is. Tooltip. GeoJSON tooltip. Display a text when hovering over the object. Can utilize the data. So this is what we want. So it says C volume G GeoJSON tooltip. So we need to click this. And this is like hard for me to look at. Like um, basically this is what we need. So they're giving us an example here. Um, so let's just copy this and paste it here. Uh, provide fields and aliases. Okay, so this is just like a, a, a comment they put in. So this is the actual call in field. So they're giving it three different fields here. We're not going to give it three. We're just going to give it one. And here it's basically asking what field name is it. So ours is not that. We have it, it's called 
name. Uh, right, so now we have to say folium.geojson tooltip. Folium.geojson tooltip. All right, getting closer here. And basically now we just have to add it to add to uh, add it to the map, right? Add to map. So it doesn't like that. We just copy this exactly how they have it. All right, let's see what this does. All right, so you cannot add a GeoJSON tooltip to anything other than a GeoJSON. Oh, right, so we, instead of adding this to the map, we need to add this to our GeoJSON. And you see like our GeoJSON right now isn't in a variable. So similar to how, like how we added uh, the map to a variable and then we're able to add things to it. Now we need to set this equal to, let's just call it G for now. Set that equal to G instead of M and now add it to the GeoJSON. So let me run this and with any luck, <laughs> this will work. Um, so let me double click that. Okay, so see now when I'm hovering over it, we see the attribute data associated with it. So you could do more things than just one field, um, but that's that's all we did here. Um, so yeah, that is all I wanted to show you in this video. Uh, I think in the next video, I'm gonna um, show how we can basically convert a shape file to GeoJSON um, because somebody was interested in uh, working with shape files in um, volume and I don't think that's possible. Uh, it, it seems like we're just going to have to convert it to a GeoJSON first. Um, so that will be in the next video.